What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with the weekly reset for Destiny 2, and it's the 9th of April. Of course, today we get the launch of Into the Light, this is the pre-final shape update for the game, and it's dropping with a bunch of free content for players. So we've got the new game mode, a set of returning weapons, as well as updated exotic missions. Plus there are loads of other updates that we've had in the patch today, not to mention Bungie's latest reveal, of course, for the final shape, so they've showed off a bit more new gameplay for that. And we get the trailer for Into the Light, as well as a handful of updates to the game. So loads of stuff going on this week, guys. If you want to be kept up to date with everything, definitely get subscribed to the channel and I'll keep you posted. But for today, we'll break down some of the key things, featured rewards for the week, the new content, and things like the Eververse inventory, vendors, and much more. So as always, I hope you find the video useful, but without further delay, let's get into it. And so first up for today, of course, we just got Bungie's live reveal for the final shape. They actually showed off a bunch of pretty exciting stuff. Firstly, that we're going to have the ability to kind of mix and match various different subclass elements in this sort of new subclass format. And that also means mixing and matching darkness and light classes. So really bizarre stuff right there. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more to break down, but otherwise other quick highlights include that Bungie are bringing back exotic class items, and they're actually going to allow us to kind of mix and match different exotic bonuses with them. So that's another very curious sandbox element. And we are getting new darkness enemies. Firstly, I noticed these sort of darkness themed rulk like bat sort of creatures, which is pretty bizarre. But also, it turns out there are actually a handful of brand new darkness units. So a lot of stuff to digest from Bungie's reveal today. Obviously, we're not going in depth for the purposes of this video, but give us your thoughts on that below if you did check it out. And otherwise, I'll do a roundup on it very soon. The other part that we got, though, for the reveal today includes the trailer for Into the Light. So just in case you want to check that out before we dive into the game, here it is in full. As the final shape approaches, and the forces of the Witness surge at the borders of the city, Lord Shax has been authorized by the Vanguard to place an arsenal of banned weapons from his personal collection back into circulation. Powerful gear for a powerful guardian. Good luck. Careful with that. Weapons we once deemed heretical we now see as desperate measures. I know you'll use this well. Fight well. Pushing back buys us only time, but the alternative is unthinkable. I can't wait to see what you do with that. Magnificent. Nice. Next up though, as we get into the game right here, we do actually immediately get dropped into the new social hub for Into the Light and we need to meet with Lord Shaq. So I'm not gonna go into that in too much depth, given that it's something that everyone will have to do. I guess it could potentially uh, be a spoiler of sorts, but nonetheless, that's how Into the Light kicks off. I'm sure that Shaq will give us plenty of the details and the bits and bobs we need, as we can see right here. So let us know if you're diving in for Into the Light this week. Otherwise, though, let's check out the Eververse inventory for the week. We'll see if we get anything especially new here. Not that I know of, but keep in mind, we are still getting weekly Bright Dust uh, for free right here up until the launch of the final shape. And yes, we do have the ornament uh, for Whisper of the Worm, the Gilded Cage. Uh, this is a silver item uh, this week, which makes sense. Uh, that's Bungie's typical approach. But of course, that's returning and accessible in the new Whisper or the updated Whisper mission. So. That's a thing, but for Bright Dust items, on the front page we have DIY Forge Master up first, which is available for 3,250 Bright Dust. A pretty cool one right there. Additionally though, we do have the ornament for the Recluse, the Itsy Bitsy Spider uh, ornament right here. It says, of course, I don't own this one, uh, because I don't own the new Recluse at least, uh, but that is 700 Bright Dust, so cool to have that one available. 
And uh, up next, we've got the Cannon Fodder Transmit Effect, which is 450 Bright Dust in the store this week. Then for the front page shaders, initially there is Lucid, which is available for 300 Bright Dust right there. And on top of that, there is the Erebus Glance on the front page as well. For the second page, though, immediately, uh, we do have the Extravagant, extravagant wish, Wishcraft. Wow, I cannot speak. For 1,000 voices, this is 1,250 Bright Dust. Pretty cool ornament. And of course, 1K Voices has had a bit of an ammo update in the patch today. So certainly something worth taking for a spin. But otherwise, on the second page, we've got the Chicken Dinner Exotic Emo, which is 3,250 Bright Dust this week. Additionally, the future facing mark uh, from one of the older uh, armor ornament sets, the Omelon gear right here. So you can add these to characters if you want this week. But then we have the Izanagi shell, which is available for 2,850 if you fancy some black armory themes. There's also the Laser Cutter exotic ship, which is up for 2,000 Bright Dust today. And then we've got the Lunatic's Legacy uh, exotic sparrow here, which is 2,500 Bright Dust. We'll preview the trail on that one. Of course, uh, the 1K Voices ornament, and then the Magic Trick Projection, which is 1500 Bright Dust. Not sure why Ghost Projections are always so expensive, but for the second page of Shaders, we've got Sunrise Warrior. Once again, all of these are 300 Bright Dust. There's also the Oiled Gunmetal, one that comes up quite often at Eververse, and then there is the Polished Sea Stone available this week as well. And finally for Shaders, the Sinking Feeling right here. Once again, all of these are 300 Bright Dust. But then there is the only the finest Transman effect for 450 Bright Dust. On top of that, though, we also have the Vex Gate arrival Transman effect, which is certainly a pretty cool one. And finally, the Harpy entrance as well. If you're feeling a bit Vexy today, it's all available in the store. So give us your thoughts on that inventory and anything that you plan to pick up in the comment section. We'll have a quick look at Banshee, though. Why not? Right here for the featured weapons at the moment, we've got the Lunar Latter 4B with no distractions and Adrenaline Junkie. There's also the Iota Draconis, which has got Feeding Frenzy and Kickstart. Then the True Prophecy with Opening Shard Elemental Capacitor. And the Disparity, which has Heating Up and Kill Clip. But finally, there is the Code Duello with Quick Draw and Cluster Bomb. So let us know if you're going to grab any of those. But keep in mind, the weapons and rolls will change throughout the course of the week. And very finally, for a visit to Shader 1, which apparently is the closest that we'll get to the Black Armory for Into the Light, I guess with the, the exception of Blast Furnace and Hammerhead, which is pretty cool. But for Shaders, we've got Vitrified Duality. Once again, these are all 10,000 Glimmer at Ada 1. That's quite a nice one. There is also the Tangled Rust from back in the Tangled Shore back in the day. Somewhat interesting. And finally, the new Monarchy Succession, if you want to add an older faction shader to collections. Plus, we've got the Devastation Complex set of armor uh, or the equivalent sets for all classes. So if it's one you need to pick up, you can visit Ada 1 this week. Now though, to round up some other rewards for the week, the featured Nightfall weapon this time around is the Braytech Osprey rocket launcher, and that'll drop from the birthplace of the Vile, which is the featured Nightfall. So of course there is the Grandmaster variant of that and the adept version of the weapon. So let us know if that's something you'll be hunting down despite the other updates we've had this week. Additionally though, for the featured exotic missions, this week we have Whisper and Presage. So Presage will be dropping with all of its normal rewards, but for the Whisper mission, of course that means the return of Whisper of the Worm as a craftable exotic. That one is available this week and we're getting zero hour which will be added back into the game next month but for now let us know if you plan to dive in and pick up the updated whisper in the mission this reset otherwise though the featured raid this time around is king's fall so that's another opportunity to pick up the touch of malice but additionally we have the grasp of avarice dungeon featured as well and all of the rewards in those are completely farmable this week our very final mention, though, is for the Lost Sectors this week. So today we've got Bay of Drown Wishes in the Dreaming City, which is dropping exotic helmets. That'll be followed by Chamber of Starlight on April 10th, dropping exotic legs. And then we move over to Perdition on Europa for April 11th. That one's dropping exotic gauntlets. April 12th will be Bunker E15, dropping exotic chest pieces. And the 13th will be Concealed Void, dropping exotic helmets. Finally, though, for the 14th, we've got Thriller Drone dropping exotic legs. And then on the 15th of April, it'll be Guild precept drop in exotic gauntlets so that's the rotation for lost sectors this week guys and that pretty much concludes the video for the moment as always though i'll keep you posted with all of the new content so definitely get subscribed and turn on notifications so that i can keep you up to date if you've enjoyed the video today though a rating below very much helps us out on the channel otherwise though i appreciate you tuning in have fun with the new update and i will catch you guys very soon